Do you want to know or really understand why white people, Asians, and Indians are more head in life than people of color are? Why black people aren't really as progressive and as far ahead as we should be? It's not because of opportunities. It's not because of Jim Crow shit, whatever. You guys can say whatever. It really boils down to this. Black families don't know how to transfer assets when they um, are of age, um, when they have assets, they don't know how to will them out. Um, some of them do, a lot of them do actually, but a lot are very selfish and self-centered in their motives. Um, I know a lot of black elders who have hoarded property and not pass it down to their children because they wanted to just hold on to it. I know an elder who had land in Mississippi that some relative just took over, some random relative to, just took over instead of passing that down to his son who was living in an apartment for the majority of his life. I don't understand. I just feel like these generations were, were lost in civil rights movements and other bullshit and not really focused on what needs to happen with their families and that's to retain wealth and this came up because i had a conversation with this southern country ass fucking white boy i'm talking about hick and not hick in an offensive way i call them hicks the ones that are just country as fuck drive pickup trucks with fucking budweiser's and shit just rolling down the street in the fucking country and we was having a conversation and he was telling me that his grandmother um left him and his brother, 50 acres of land. I said, well, nigga, that's a whole city. Like, what the fuck you gonna do with that? I mean, he has a little family. It's him, his wife, and his two children. And then his brother and his little family. You know, and he told me that his grandmother told him. It wasn't left in a will or anything. His grandmother told him, we're leaving this property to you and your brother. You know, before, you know, they even passed away. They had a whole conversation. Okay, we're leaving these 50 acres to you and your brother. Figure out how you're going to divvy it up. There is 90,000 left remaining. So you guys will have to pay that off, you know, but figure out how you're going to do it. So he told me, oh, his brother took X amount of land, X amount of acres and bought that part for 45,000. And he took the rest of the acres and bought them. We don't even got what fucking one acre. These niggas got 50 acres. That's a whole small ass town. And I kid you not, they can start a whole fucking town on these 50 acres that their fucking grandparents left them. You know, but most of the black people that I know are in apartments. Most of, you know, my generation, that's the millennials and my father's generation, a lot of them were in apartments. I met this woman who was like in her 50s. She said she lived in apartments her whole life. But I bet you her parents came from the South and had land. You know, it's it's really deplorable to me because I see this way too often how elders who are still living want to make a killing off of real estate. So they hoard land instead of saying, you know what, my nephew or my daughter or my whoever, it's this person that I love in my family. It doesn't even have to be a direct descendant. You know, um, I have this land. I'm already pretty established, you know. I have my own land. I don't have to hoard it in Airbnb it or whatever. Let me pass it down to my daughter who's living in an apartment or my son who's living in an apartment and doesn't have anything. I'm not going to judge them based on where they are in their life. Just because, you know, a lot of black people want to judge. Oh, well, he ain't about shit. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to leave it to my son because he's not responsible enough, you know. Even, you know, these country ass white people, most times they got land already. They be country as fuck. They might have land and have a fucking trailer sitting on this land, right? But they have a whale in the backyard. I've seen this. I've seen these homes with whales. And, and I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, whales. Like the water whales, where the water comes up or you dip the bucket in there and you get water. Like they have, that's an asset that a lot of, Black families ain't even seen because they're giving up their land to people. They're getting greedy and saying, oh, I have this home that's worth multi-million dollars or it's worth $600,000. I'm going to sell it. You know, <laughs> why? Why are you not passing down that wealth to your children? That's passing down a legacy to your children. When this man told me this, 
that he was gifted 50 acres from his grandmother. I almost fell out. This guy was younger than me. He was like in his 20s. You know, and the fact that he was even able to have a, a conversation with his grandmother about it before she passed on, before she, you know, before her relatives, because she might know she got some trifling ass relatives that might do some shit after she passed away. So she's going to make it known, this is yours. Here you go. You know what I'm saying? Like, where where is a disconnect in our culture? And let me share a story with you because this is why it's, I, I've, I've experienced it firsthand, right? You know, I had a woman who um, was a part of my life since I was very young. I would refer to her as my stepmother because she was married to my father. And um, she practically, like, raised me. She was in and out. My mother wasn't in my life. But she was, you know, after she and my father got a divorce or separated or whatever, when I was still very young, she continuously would check in on us and, and be in our life, show up to graduation. She was there for really critical, really beautiful event. She called me her daughter. You know, I called her my stepmom my entire life. You know, when she would refer to me to anyone, she would refer as, this is my daughter. This is my baby, you know? And, um, she unfortunately passed away, um, sooner than she would have liked because she had a heart condition and she knew that there, there could be a detrimental impact on her body if she continued on with this heart condition so she had to have surgery she planned for surgery and everything and you know before she even passed away she had told me you know if anything ever happened to me Aisha you know I would like to give you this or I would like you know you and my my grandbabies to be taken care of you know but she had um because of this heart condition she had to plan this 50 50 surgery like it was an experimental surgery and um, she had actually told the doctors that she was going to hold off on the surgery because her grandbaby was being born. My daughter was being born. So she delayed her surgery um, to um, to witness the birth of her grandchild, right? Um, unfortunately, she lost her life after that surgery and um, it was devastating. Um, you know, what was really weird, I'll just throw this in there, uh, what was really weird, you know, you know someone for, I'm 39, um, so practically like 38, 39 years of your life, and you find out via text message that she passes away, right? Another story for a different day. But, you know, when I asked her family, her very close family member, you know, did she have a will? Did she have you know, anything. And she basically said no. So if you're planning for an experimental surgery and you know, you're going to pass away, you don't put a will together and you're extremely intelligent. Your family's extremely intelligent. You're college educated. You're, you know, working for these, you're brilliant educators, you know, but you don't have a will. I mean, that's not my business, but I don't know if I believe that there's no will story or not. You know, it's not my business. I never really heard of anything after she passed away. You know, she had a home that she owned. And um, the unfortunate part about it was the boyfriend that she had uh, met like months prior to that took over the home, took over her cars, everything. You know, I was living in an apartment with two very, very young children. We were living in an apartment that was literally 10 minutes away from um, my stepmother's house. And it was decided to give some random man her home. And I know it wasn't a giving her her home, but let him stay in the home. And the, the, her family took over responsibility for that home or whatever. And the thing about it is the family members who took over responsibility for the home already have established property, already have their own assets, already have um, things that they can call their own. But she didn't have any other children. That's why she called me and my other sister, her child, her children, her only two children. But after she died, I didn't even, that was it. <laughs> so, you know, that's just a, uh, one story. But and, and that should just prove to you, like, if somebody's not technically your family, you know, and you don't have a written agreement with this person that or have had a solid conversation where it's actually documented, where this person has said, oh, I'm going to transfer this wealth to you, then consider yourself like 
not even family, you know? Um, but anyway, that's, that's, that's just an example. You know, I have a lot of relatives who have property, who are elderly and have hoarded property, have great properties, hoarded them or either just sold them, you know, to make quick profits. And they don't, they don't even know where this money is anymore. They don't, they can't even see, smell or touch this money anymore, but their children are still living in apartments, you know? So... For me, it's a learning lesson, right? Because I can't do anything about my elders, right? I can just do for my children and ensure that my children are properly taken care of. And I just hope like we can get better as a culture. You know, I am rooting for the black culture at this point um, because we have given so much to other races, so much credit to other races and, and put them on pedestals for stealing our shit and just, repurposing the shit and giving it to their um offsprings like you know when i say stealing you know my great grandfather had hundreds of acres of land in texas um and after he passed away abruptly my grandfather and my great grandmother you know my my grand my grandfather is still being a child at that time and my great grandmother who was the wife of my grandfather had to flee the land with her children from Texas had to flee the land because the KKK kept threatening them. And, and, um, a week after they moved and they flee to Nevada, the KKK came and burned that land down. And near that land was a lot of different, a lot of other relatives, you know, um, my grandfather's cousins, aunties, it was a whole community. They burned the whole community down. What do you think they did with that land? You know, like I've already shared a story where my grand great grandfather had so much land that white men, this is the story my grandfather actually told me. My grandfather don't make up shit. Um, white men would come onto his land and steal produce off his land and sell in the farmer's markets. He caught a white man stealing produce off his land and shot him. But because he was like a very important person, this was like in the early 1900s or late 1800s in Texas, in the South. You know, this is why I don't believe a lot in slavery shit. I mean, I just, cause I, the people that I know had a lot of power. So because he worked in the shipping industry, he was um, considered like pretty high on the pedestal and he, he never went to jail for shooting a white man <laughs> for being on his property. So, but later after he passed away, um, his property was burned down. My family had to flee to Nevada with nothing, you know, and start over. So what happened to that land? Now they're giving it to their offsprings for an inheritance where we're fucking in apartments now. The, the, the offsprings of the original landowners are sitting up in apartments and shit. All my friends that I know live in apartments. And these people, some of them work, make $100,000 a year. They still living in apartments because not just because they, they can't afford homes, but because they've just been programmed in their mind that that's all they're worth is to live in an apartment. You know, it's fucked up. But you know what? We gonna make it, you know? And um, in order for us to make it is to really just take back our power. And understand that we can we can be landowners. We can buy homes. If we grew up in Oakland and the, the property is too expensive to live out there and to buy a home, move somewhere else. Move somewhere else and buy land. If you can't, if you don't want to live there, there's there's so much land out here. But our parents don't teach us nothing like this, like about credit, about how to build, how to buy, how to own, like a lot of our parents. So I know some that do. But um Let's just try to get better as a culture. Why not? Like, 